because Prague is really, it's, it's like a book of, of urbanism, it's beautiful. Uh, Prague is even, I, I would say it's even more interesting than some Italian cities. Actually, all Italian cities together are interesting, very interesting, but to understand urbanism, Prague is better. Because it's a lot of small, unfinished stories where you can really discover all approaches in Europe in urbanism. And it's beautiful. That's why it's in UNESCO. Mm -hmm. uh, because they, uh, they say uh, Prague is in UNESCO because of, of his, uh, its beauty. It's, it's not true. It's because of urbanism. History of urbanism. Good morning, my name is Regina Loukotová and this is our architecture podcast. Today we have Lukáš here. Hello. Lukáš. Hello. <laughs> nice to see you. Actually, Lukáš is my student from 90s, I have to admit. Yeah. <laughs> so this is how we can start. <laughs> that uh, our or my students uh, and my late husband's students are teaching uh, with us, which I'm extremely happy for. And uh, I'm going to interview Lukáš today about uh, how he realized in the past that he wanted to study architecture and we will go through our practice, combining your practice and, and teaching. And then we can comment on some, uh, you know, uh, up-to-date or the current happenings within our profession. So Lukáš, how old were you <laughs> when you decided to study architecture? I was... 15. I was 15 years old. My both parents were architects, are architects, and I wanted to study philosophy. So uh, I was in love in philosophy. I just, well, I always liked architecture. But then I will explain you why I decided to, uh, to study architecture. It was not because of my parents, because I knew that is a hard work. <laughs> I knew that they, they, they spent nights by doing all these architectural competitions and I love that. But the fact is that philosophy helped me to understand things. And I, I wanted to understand things. I mean, we could say the truth, what is the truth? <laughs> but, and then, yeah, but knowledge, it's the, the first goal. You must understand what is happening around mm. you. No, I cannot more uh, you know than agree when I started studying architecture I studied uh, philosophy too so I was like escaping <laughs> from uh, our faculty to the Charles University to philosophical faculty it was early 90s and Haydanek and others mm. uh, you know professor Haydanek uh, or actually former dissidents uh, started teaching there so for me it was also kind of a big discovery to know more, to learn more, actually. So I understand your your emotions. I, I, I was really lucky because you know Petrček, Miroslav mm -hmm, Petrček. I, I, I really, I, he's a great philosopher. And uh, it happened in in my high school. His wife was hosting for for one semester, and I I, I could discuss with her about philosophy, the real philosophy. So she was and at she, your high and, school. And she asked me, like, where would I put my energy in the future? And I was 15 years old, and I said, I would like to study philosophy. And she said, look, that could be something better. <laughs> Don't you want to study architecture, for example? Because the problem of philosophy is that it's not active. It's not for people. Well, it, it can be active, but it's difficult. Uh, the, the, because you m must materialize your energy. Well, you don't it have was, to. It was, well, you sh well, you won't. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it was not. It was not uh, that moment when I decided to to to, to study architecture. It was a well. Uh, it's a long story, and you can cut it later. But um, well, uh, it was in in Greece. It was one uh, because I really loved Greece, uh, Greek architecture and, and, and because that added fundaments. And uh, I'm teaching actually fundaments of urbanism. And <laughs> we could talk about Greece, Italy, and, and and the truth behind that, where it started. 
I was even in, in Iraq, I was planning uh, a region. We didn't get paid actually, but uh, I was in, in uh, Erbil, one of the oldest cities. And it's, um, you know, what is unbelievable, that the city started already like, like a real city. It's, it's not like from a, from a village to a city. It started, <laughs> urbanism started already like a, already urbanism. Now we and speak, I love uh, it. Now we speak about Iraq and, and your practice there. I think we, can, we will come to that later. So you were about at the age of 15. I think it's almost similar with uh, all of us, like when you are the beginning of the first year of your high school, uh, I mean, in a European scale, we have four years high school. It means when you are 15, 16, then you already start to think, you know, where should I put my energy or <laughs> what shall I study? But with your background, I mean, mo both parents are architects. It was probably more uh, kind of obvious that you will uh, take this path. But uh, did you study in the Czech Republic? Or I know that you studied here, but at the beginning, were you considering also studying abroad? Or uh, yeah, the, the Czech Technical University and Faculty of Architecture was the first choice and the only Uh, no, it was, it was the first choice, but we are talking about the 90s. It was not easy to, to go abroad, it was very expensive for us. And uh, with the first chance, it was uh, the program Socrates before Erasmus. Now you are right. I went to study in the third year to Venice. Which year it was? Third. But uh, 1990... 1999, I Nine. guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. 1999. And uh, I found, well, I was studying for one year in Italy. And where in Italy? In Venice. In Venice, yes. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful, and yeah, I, I even brought my, my future wife from, from Venice to Prague. We have two children. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice story, uh, and Italy is one of the best countries to, to understand the, uh, the fundamentals of, <laughs> of architecture. But what, 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 what I wanted to say, the fact is that we are living in cities today. So we are yeah. going back to cities yeah. and back to Iraq, to your uh, experience and, from and having Greece, a project. And to Greece, and to Italy, yeah. and, and to Prague. Mm -hmm. Because Prague is really, it's, it's like a book of, of urbanism, it's beautiful. Uh, Prague is even, I would say it's even more interesting than some Italian cities. Actually, all Italian cities together are interesting, very interesting. But to understand urbanism, Prague is better. Because it's a lot of small, unfinished stories where you can really discover all approaches in Europe in urbanism and it's beautiful that's why it's in UNESCO mm -hmm. uh, because they, they say uh, Prague is in UNESCO because of, of his, uh, its beauty it's, it's not true it's because of urbanism history of urbanism but is that's there any contradiction between beauty and urbanism probably not many professionals associate beauty with urbanism Uh, and, but uh, uh, also when we speak about architecture, I have to just, uh, you know, for our uh, listeners uh, explain that we mean, when we speak about architecture, actually we include their urban planning, uh, urbanism, master planning, regional planning, uh, landscape architecture. So let's say under the world uh, of architecture, there are many other, uh, many other professions hidden and we use uh, the word architecture uh, for kind of uh, to simplify that and also i wanted to mention that uh, you are were educated as as architect and urbanist that your phd is also uh, actually more focused on urbanism yes. than architecture and uh, there was one more thing i wanted to edit which i just uh, forgot But uh, let's, uh, let's continue where we stopped. We were speaking about cities. I wanted to mention that you are, what uh, courses you are teaching here uh, at ARCIP, which are three co courses at the bachelor level, and it's Fundaments of uh, Urbanism, Master Planning, and Urban Design. Yes. And we teach these courses already from the very beginning of our curriculum. So that's just to explain 
why are you immediately into urbanism, immediately <laughs> into, let's say, ancient as well as uh, modern cities. So now well, after my introduction, are introduction very interesting, yeah? but the thing is, uh, when I said modern cities, I meant like already these, uh, you know, some of the Greek cities or ancient cities, which actually then uh, kind of naturally became modern. It's also a question where, where we put, uh, you know, how we define the, the name or the expression modern city. Uh, I, I like it because I think that um, what makes really a big difference between urbanism and architecture is uh, the role of time. And urbanism and planning are really uh, connecting space and time. And it's, it's, it's very interesting, like, and it's, it's not described very well. In a, in a, in a, I, I read some papers where they started to think this, this issue, like uh, uh, the fundamentals of, of planning, but uh, that it's not described very mm -hmm. well, and I, I hope and I will find time to, to, to write a book about it. <laughs> but <laughs> I wanted to tell you that uh, I decided to study architecture because we live in cities. Philosophy was about understanding the world from sentences, from books, and the city helps you to understand the world from what you see, what you live. What and you that was beautiful, like what you experience. What you yeah, use and what you can create here. Mm -hmm, you can mm -hmm. create frames for life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. City is a frame for life. That's, uh, that's true. And, and uh, that, that, was, that, that was the base of my decision when I was 19, 20 years mm -hmm. old and I, I really started to, to study architecture. And that's probably also the reason why you focused more on urbanism than on architecture. If you go like deeper into those terms, urban planning and architecture, that you were not so much into buildings themselves, but more into planning, into s uh, setting a frame to uh, life, as you say, to city life. Yeah, uh, for sure. Of course, I have some some architectural realization. Of some I did some detached houses. Some some uh, some architecture is behind me, but. Um, um, you can you can see in this way, uh, uh, life sometimes is based on a couple of small decisions that you, you never know if it's important or not. And it happened to me because uh, my professor, Professor Sedlak, asked me to do uh, urban design with him and we did uh, the first study for right after my school for Nakladova uh, and Zizhkov. And when I was in working in Italy with Renzo Piano, he asked me to do an, uh, a competition with him because I spoke Italian for, because of the Socrates program. And uh, we did uh, an urban project. So these are the small things that, that can, can change your life. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to mention that uh, part of your uh, professional experience too, that you spent some time in like world famous studio of Renzo Piano. Uh, so can you share with us your experience <laughs> from there, you know, like when was it, how long you spent uh, in his studio and how, how was it to work with this uh, architecture star? Uh, yeah, he's, he's a great man. It's, uh, and then I understood that I can't be the best architect because I was already with the best architect. You know? <laughs> but yeah, it was it was great and uh, uh, just it was the most important, most fundamental experience in in my life. And um, and I was lucky. I was lucky because. Uh, he liked the project for, for Milano. It was uh, it was um, this competition. It was important for him. And uh, as I could speak Italian, I was really in, a, in the core of, uh, of the group. So at the, at the beginning, the very beginning, we were three. At the very end of this competition, the, the, the whole studio was working on it. But I was lucky to to, to spend. A lot of time with him mm -hmm. uh, to listen to him. And did you and win the learn. competition? No, we were second. Huh. Who won it? Uh, Zaha did. Okay. <laughs>
another <laughs> another star yeah. architect Zaha Hadid. Yeah, so it was an uh, important uh, moment in your life to, to yeah. spend it. Have you been there for one year? For one year. For one year. Almost one year. Yeah. And it was 2004. 2004, yeah. so it's 20 years ago. And uh, now I would uh, probably uh, move a little bit further uh, to your practice. So what do you do for living? What, uh, uh, what do you do in your daily life? Uh, It's a combination of many things, I know <laughs> it, but uh, I think uh, our listeners would love to hear that from you. Yeah, it was an, another small thing, small decision that I did in uh, 2015, um, because I was asked to, to help uh, the deputy mayor for planning in Prague that right after the, the elections to, to help him or to, to write down some points for, for, for planning for the, for the program uh, of uh, the council. And yeah, and then I started to work with him as a, his assistant and another assistant. Deputy yeah, Mayor of Deputy Prague. Mayor of Prague, Prague yeah. For planning. Then a second, well, I worked for three mm -hmm. Deputy Mayors in Prague. Then, then I founded, uh, well, I was asking Prague 8 to fund a, Um, uh, department for planning, and then uh, uh, now I, I work as uh, the head of uh, department of planning in uh, in Prague Five, where I live. Yes, so but that's not your only activity to be uh, the head of planning department of Prague Five. But you run also your own studio, don't you? Yes. You do? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we we have a well. It's it's a family studio. So they, uh, mm -hmm. my parents founded the studio in um, '96. So, yeah, mm -hmm. and we we still have it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I I, I I actually would like to to do a different planning. Just uh, what I learned from uh, from the cities. I think I still think that we should connect better uh, the requirements of, uh, of the cities and our architect architectonic point of view for, for management planning and just try to do it differently, maybe to respond better to, to, to the requirements of, of cities and uh, one day I, I will do, I hope to do this new, mm -hmm. let's say, Concept of planning. Concept of planning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, so you touched a little bit upon your uh, let's say professional work in your family uh, studio, but going back to your work for Prague Five. Yes. And I have beautiful daughters, and one of them wants to study architecture. I don't know why, mm -hmm. but she said she wants to be an architect. So. Hopefully she's already 13, so <laughs> in 10 years she she could run the studio with us. That would be that would be nice. But going back to your uh, to your uh, actually profession as uh, head of the planning department of Prague 5, can you tell us a little bit what's your daily uh, schedule like? What do you what do you do uh, with whom you collaborate? Uh, yeah. You don't want to hear that. <laughs> Maybe not me, but uh, no, it's others. It's just a lot, a lot of meetings. That, that's unbelievable, but talking, actually, is the mm -hmm. tool of mm -hmm. urbanists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because you need to, to sit, listen, talk, explain, understand. Connect, maybe. Connect, mm. decide. Mm -hmm. So what... what But, but still, you need to keep the vision and the, the, uh, the city, it's like the 3 or 4 d model that you need to have in your head, because otherwise you don't know what to say, you must see it. So it's like, it's quite abstract with very mm, concrete things, with very real things that are happening. Mm -hmm. So you got connecting the, the, the The, the, the reality with, uh, with, uh, with abstract and, and, and time-dependent decisions. And still, listen, 
talk, understand. That's that's the main uh, main thing. So so my f- my phone is always uh, off in the in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. And I have a big phone, big 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 battery, but it mm-hmm. never mm-hmm. lasts the whole day. <laughs> Can you tell us what is your vision for Prague Five? I mean, in like few sentences. Look, this is a bit difficult. It's it's, it's not my vision. Um, you know, Prague Five. Uh, my role is just I have a mandate for something, but uh, to decide a vision, it must be all inhabitants of Prague through the politicians, through the people that that are under me. All, all it's not you. It's it, it, if if you. Are focused on your ego. Don't never don't do uh, urbanism and planning because it's not about one person. It's 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 not about one genius. You can do design, art, architecture. One genius, that's great. But not don't do cities. In the <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly based approach. on agree- <laughs> agreement. Yeah, so that's something. Your ego. Yeah. I think that's where we are a little bit. Uh, I would say hanging behind because to come into common agreement, it's very difficult with, difficult. with our, I mean, Czech uh, skepticism and pessimism it's and uh, <laughs> let's say impossibility to communicate and to listen to others and, and come into some decision. So I can imagine that that's, uh, that's really difficult. So thank you for your description <laughs> of how how what, it's, what, it's, what it's, it's, it's also about the compromises because uh, you must understand all this. look it's 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 the city can be seen as a statue you never you never see the whole statue from one point of view you must turn around huh? it's, it's a, a 3d or 4d, 4D object, 4D as, 4D a, object. A, a, as you said so I didn't get uh, a vision from from you, but uh, there certainly are some documents and plans where uh, Prague Five should head to. But on the other side, there are also like smaller, tinier projects which have been realized within Prague Five. And last year, we also did collaborate with the London uh, Architecture School called AA Architecture Association. And we did together project uh, for uh, for the valley, for the motel area around around the hospital. Which uh, at the end of the workshop we exhibited in your uh, little gallery, which is a little little gallery, and there are with architects. A big so, impact. so we still are trying somehow to involve the people to to to, to talk to them. Mm-hmm. So so people that are working in in in, a, in my department. So a couple of times I'm sitting down and talking with people, showing them uh, the, the project. We have a small gallery just for, for planning. That's, uh, that's one of the ways how to understand it. We try to do a lot of participatory processes, working with uh, yeah, universities, with ARCHIP, of course, uh, but also AA, Faculty of Architecture, and uh, Czech, uh, Czech, uh, Czech Czech Università. Yep. Um, and others, but where I want And others, so I'm trying to, uh, I, I should not say it, but um, Prague 5 is um, a scene where we are trying to implement modern, new, to try the new ways of planning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's a great opportunity, um, helpful. I really have, uh, have to say for be thankful to to the politicians that I can do it. Mm-hmm. They give me money for it, mm-hmm. and we are trying to do it differently. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we will see. That's and good. we have some out- outcomes, and we have uh, the very specific uh, documentation that doesn't exist. Uh, that I, I never saw anywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, the structural plan, which uh, is trying to to see the city in, in a different way, mm-hmm. which is not based on uh, on our legislation, but it works. And um, yeah, and this we are collaborating also on on, on, on with foreign architects. So 
it's another kind of communication just to see how do you do it and how do we do it and what, what would be better where is the problem how to do to make it better yeah. so yeah. that's where I wanted to you know to go is into the smaller projects you know uh, yeah. You have some documents, you mentioned your structural plan, uh, which you are using or uh, at the moment working on or approving. I don't know exactly in which stage the project or the That's plan the is. But uh, can you give us some example of smaller projects within, within, within Prague 5, which you like or which you would like to, to mention here? I have to be a bit careful with Prague 5. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you could say Prague I, 8, I, I, or, I you love can, my work. or you can <laughs> you can name any project uh, within so, Prague uh, which you uh, like or which you would like to highlight here. Uh, I should be a bit careful, and, mm -hmm. um, but what I really like is, and it was actually the topic of, 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 of my dissertation. It's uh, how to reinterpret the reinterpretation of, of the past into the modern, which can be contrast, which can be invisible, which can be somehow uh, a, mo a modification of the past. It can be even um, repairing some mistake with some, s but s it can be also improving of. Or I don't know how to it, how, how to s how to explain myself. It's um, um, evolving. Yes, it's time. It's how to well. You are. You're still the same person that I know when I was your student. You're beautiful, I, I, I like you, I can recognize you. You are a bit different. Every cell in your body is different. I can say you are older, but yeah. that's fine. Are you going to compare me with the city now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> Yeah. No, that, that's nice because mm -hmm. it's still you. Mm -hmm. The yeah. identity is the same. Mm -hmm. uh, you are even better because you have so many experiences and there is work behind you. You, mm -hmm. you did, you found it, a school. And I remember the, the beginnings. Mm -hmm. It was not easy. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. And it's great. And it's, it's you. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's very similar to the city, to the neighborhood. How the neighborhood can evolve and not l lose the identity and the character. And this is, this is, the, this is my question. That's, that's what I'm trying to do. In mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. Thank you, Lukáš. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you for the interview. And uh, yeah, I hope we make part two, <laughs> where, we go, <laughs> where we can go deeper into philosophy and, and cities. So thank you very much. And thank you for uh, being with us.